Trying Sekiro after playing Dark Souls 1 and 2 makes me really love this game, but it also really makes me- Ah! Hit your review. Welcome back, friends, to my second impression of Sekiro, which I'm not sure if I'm pronouncing that right, but this is my second time playing the game, and now in a whole new context with newfound Monster Hunter and Dark Souls abilities now acquired, I am revisiting Sekiro after two years of playing it and putting it away because it was too hard and I wasn't having fun with it. So I revisited it as part of the 12 Days of Heijay. This was the fifth game in the, in, in the lineup. Uh, it was recommended by all of you. And I have to say, what, I'll start with the good stuff. I am proud because in my four hour stream, I overcame both my walls yeah! that had walled me two years yes! ago. So I think we should start with two years ago. I picked up Sekiro because I love samurai type games. And so just the aesthetic and the play style of this game really drew me in despite not having really had played any From Software games at the time. Uh, on top of all this, it was getting a lot of praise and eventually got game of the year, I think, or was a contender for game of the year. So I picked up the game and at first I was struggling with everything as though as you would in a from software game um but i slowly made my way through it and i made it past the chain ogre and i got stuck on general tenzin yamauchi which is i'm not sure if he's an optional boss or not but i got stuck on him i tried going uh beyond him and i found like a headless thing like a medusa or something which just destroyed me and then I just kept trying to explore. I eventually found a bell, which takes me to a dream world. And then I got stuck on a guy with a lance. So I pretty much everywhere I kept going, I kept dying a lot. And I wasn't used to the run back. I wasn't used to the From Software formula. And so I put the game down and I was like, I don't know if I'll ever get back to this. Well, here we are two years later after now having acquired Dark Souls, uh, after appreciating the, Darks, the From Software formula, um, taking another crack at it. Starting right away, uh, the first thing I noticed was how fast and fluid the game was compared to Dark Souls. And I'm going to compare a lot to Dark Souls because, I mean, it's the same creators. Um, the game just flowed so much better. And the first enemy that came at me, they're like, all right, now, now we do the whole, like, parry and this is how we kill things. And oh my god, it was so fluid and I was parrying and I'm like, oh man, I'm going to be like OP for this game. I've trained so hard in Dark Souls, I'm going to be so much better. Uh, this time around and so I'm going around and honestly it's been long enough that I had forgotten a lot of the base mechanics of this game so I'm playing it as a new player with like vague memories of oh yeah th this happens but I like, completely forgot about like prayer beads skills uh, the different like power-ups and stuff so it was almost like a new experience with a little bit of nostalgia um, made my way like, I, I completely forgot that there was a, a, a fight with this guy at the beginning called uh, Genichiro, I believe his name is. And I was like, am I, am I supposed to fight him? Oh, wait, yeah, I lost to this guy. So I'm like, I'm supposed to lose. But then the chat's like, no, 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 you can actually beat him. So that kind of made me lean forward. And I was like, all right, we got to figure out how to, how to fight this. I lasted, I think, 30 seconds, which I'm pretty proud of. Um, and then I died, of course, and he chopped oh, my man. arm off. There was no way I would have been able to beat him. I just was not comfortable or skilled enough with the Sekiro formula at this point to even stand a chance. If anything, my reflexes from Dark Souls helped me last that long, but otherwise he chopped, chopped me pretty quick. So from there, uh, I went my usual path. I remember there was like a, a general, which you can kill, you can backstab him to get like one health thing off of him. And then um, you just have to find the rest of the time. And I think I died maybe once or twice, just as I had to learn that these bigger enemies have multiple attacks that you have to like ding, ding, and then uh, attack. One thing that pulled me, uh, that kind of threw me off from being so used to Dark Souls is Dark Souls, you go in, you, you, you swipe a few times, you roll back and you wait for an opening. Here, the chat was telling me, no, no, you have to be more aggressive because as soon as any enemy required more than one parry, I was getting hit a lot or I was having troubles. So I learned that you have to like stay in close hand-to-hand -hand combat and you have to watch their animation very carefully because sometimes you have to parry, 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 and then you get the opening to attack. And it's so much more fast paced and intense. It's not just roll, attack, roll back. Uh, it's like you gotta be right up in there and then you have to be very comfortable with both your offense and your defense to survive. And then, and it, it happens so fast. It's, it's kind of a challenge, and I think it, hap it gets easier the more you play it because you learn what every enemy's moveset is 
what their animation is, and eventually you get comfortable enough that you recognize the cues that you can just go, oh, parry, 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 attack, parry, 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 attack. And when that happens, when that little click happens per each character, it's very satisfying because the run back, well, you can, you know, you can avoid most of the enemies, but the run back also becomes, you can just run at people, bing, bing, kuh, bing, 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 and it just makes you feel so much more powerful to just run through and slaughter everything as you go. Now, the... I'm just trying to think where to go from here because this is all the stuff I love. The thing that I hate, I guess we should really talk about the thing I hate right away. So the one of the things I complain the most about Dark Souls is the run back. Specifically on difficult bosses, I hate having to run through a mob. And I've learned in Dark Souls to just avoid mobs where necessary to make the run back more easily. And in Dark Souls 3, they made the run back a lot more bearable. I think I complained a lot less about the run back in Dark Souls 3 compared to Dark Souls. In Sekiro, the run back is dialed up a little bit because you have your run back, which I've learned to manage from Dark Souls where I can learn to bypass enemies or because of the combat mechanic, you can clear out enemies faster. But then there is now the mob that joins the boss problem. So it's almost like a double run back because First, you have the run back to the boss, and at least this is in my experience of the first few bosses I've encountered. Then you have to clear the mob around the boss, and then you get your one-on-one -on -one fight with the boss. So it's almost like a three-stage boss fight that becomes very tedious because you can't really, you know, the the run back you can get away the you can get away from the mobs, but the mobs surrounding the boss you have to deal with them, or you will die so fast. So a lot of my time on bosses is spent clearing out mobs just to get maybe a five second window with the boss, learn a move and then die and have to redo it again. And there's just no getting around that. So that part is really frustrating to me and it's really souring my experience. Now let's talk about the walls I overcame. So in Sekiro, there's pretty much two paths you can take from the beginning, which I had completely forgotten about. Because the first time I played this two years ago, I went through the main path, I fought the chain ogre without the fire, um, without the flamethrower, which is something you get in the branching path. So for those who don't know, um, there's the main path, which is in modern time. And then if you find a bell, you take that bell to the Buddha statue, you can go into the dream world. And that's like a, another path. So originally I went down the main path, spent like an hour on the chained ogre, killed him, and then eventually got stuck on General Tenzin. And then I later found the bell that took me to the dream world, made it all the way up to some stairs where you fight a mid boss, which is a Lance user. And that guy just destroyed me. So this time, knowing that that was uh, an option, I went to the dream world first. And for the most part, it was pretty comfortable. I found uh, an, yeah, so I got the flamethrower pretty quick and I was able to deal with everyone. I got an axe upgrade, which was awesome. I don't remember getting the axe upgrade last time, but that made me, that made shields so easy. Shield users are just like one hit. You just bash them and then just kill. Oh, I love killing guys with shields because it's so easy. And I really wish I had found that axe last time. Uh, then I, I was reminded about skills. So I don't remember quite what you get for skills, but uh, acquiring a certain amount of something lets you have uh, skill upgrades, which you eventually get the one that steps on the weapon and then you like stab people. It's called like the meat Tsurugi or something. Um, I don't remember the name of that and I didn't write it down, but that is pretty much critical to the, to taking down the Lance user. And that's what chat helped me with. So I went against not Lance spear, uh, the spear user, and he kind of destroyed me, went back, got the skill. And then it was just kind of a, um, you know, just keep repeating and trying. So clearing the mob, understanding the best, best path to clear the mob, hiding in the bush, taking one health out of the two healths away from the, the spear user, and then just learning the mechanics and the animations and the timing. And eventually he fell, opening a whole new set of game for me that I had not seen before. So after that, I made my way to uh, eventually a fight with Juzu the Drunkard. And this guy walls me hard and this is where i kind of got exhausted because there's the run back which has a bunch of mobs but i learned you can stick to the roofs to avoid them and then the mob itself which there's there's like about 10 dudes to kill so that takes time and then juzu he's so aggressive he kills me in like three swings now this is a game i can't I, I just feel it's a game I have to put down and I have to like come back when I'm refreshed and just do one boss at a time. Like this is not a game I can play a lot because it requires so much focus, so much attention. 
and so much patience just to overcome these dudes. I was watching the volume, I was like, oh, I could have blocked there, I could have blocked here. Like, Juzu, I think, is, well, he's definitely conquerable, it just requires a lot of patience. And even more patience, because you're always clearing the mobs. Like, it's not like you just get to get that one-on-one -on -one with him and just keep learning and learning and learning until you overcome him. It requires a dedicated game session to beat him. So unfortunately, I did not beat Juzu. I haven't even been able to knock off one piece of his uh, heart. I'm just not good enough yet at parrying and deflecting. And it's kind of frustrating. I want to be better. And that wanting to be better is what's actually driving me to want to replay this game. Uh, so I abandoned that with my newfound skills and upgrades. I'm like, all right, let's go back to the main path, see how far I can go. The Chained Ogre took me like three tries. It was so easy in comparison to two years ago. Now that I had the freaking flamethrower and also I kind of knew what I was doing this time. So I'm just like on him, there's like choo choo. And then he was more of a typical Dark Souls boss because he has no weapons. So he like really projects like, I'm going to grab you. And I'm like, dodge, tack, 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 dodge. And then he's like the elbow. And I'm like, dodge, attack, attack, attack. He just felt like way more of a from software boss and it was way more fun fighting the chained ogre than it was two years ago so after that i'm like all right general tenzin you're next you're the the other wall that i had last time and this one took me a while i think it was like a half hour to an hour and it's again because i had to learn how to deal with the mob and then i had to learn how to deal with parrying and I just was not good enough. And I'm like, how do you get better at parrying? And it comes down to you have to be really attentive to the animation and your reflexes need to be on point. And that is not always easy to get there, to get to that point that you need to be. Because it's not just parry once and off you go. It's like parry, parry, parry. Like there's, you have to be consistently good. And I see why people call this like a rhythm game because it's oftentimes like block, 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 attack, block, block, block. Like there, there is a pattern to it and a rhythm. But you have to learn it first before you can apply it. So, and that learning process is pretty painful. So I, I did kill him eventually. So both of my original walls, the General Tenzin and the Spear user have both died. But now my new walls are Jews with the Drunkard and I left the rest of the game open so I have something to look forward to. So I actually don't know what happens after General Tenzin. That path is now open to me and I can kind of go and explore and maybe discover new pains. Um, this is a game I do want to revisit. I still, I need the, I need it to click to really enjoy it because right now I'm so overwhelmed in a lack of skill for this game. It's punishing me and I, I can see it. I can see that like this just needs to click. My, my parrying and deflecting needs to click. And once that clicks, this game can be super fun, but I'm not there yet. So it's kind of frustrating. Uh, I will be playing this in 2022. It will be on stream. I'm not pledging yet. I don't know when I'm going to put it into the schedule, but it's a game I want to keep playing and keep exploring. So expect more Sekiro in 2022. And thank you again for recommending it and uh, helping me get back into it. I look forward to getting better at this because, yeah, I'm just going to feel like I'm going to feel like a badass playing this game. I'll see you in the next video or the next stream. And until next time, keep it classy. Do, 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 do. Do 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 subscribe.